Hi, I'm Michael Couture, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. Now, on December 12th, voters in the UK will cast their ballot. Will Brexit opponents secure enough votes to stop Brexit going ahead at the end of January? And if not, what will the present Brexit deal mean for the UK and for the European Union? Joining me now is David Jeffrey, Professor of British Politics at the University of Liverpool. Thanks very much for joining us. Let's start with the election call. The opposition pushed for this election in December. What are they hoping to accomplish? Um, well, the, the main push uh, for the election came not from the main opposition, Labour Party, but the SNP, the Scottish National Party, and the Lib Dems, uh, Liberal Democrats, both of whom hope to increase their seat share because they're doing quite well in the polls um, against the divided Labour Party and um, amongst their remain voters. So they're hoping to win more seats. Well, right now, though, recent polls are suggesting that Prime Minister Boris Johnson will win in December. So if that doesn't hold true, does that change anything in terms of Brexit? Oh, it, it would change everything. There'd be no more... If, if Boris Johnson got a majority reflecting what the polls are showing now, he would be completely uh, able to deliver his deal, to deliver Brexit. Um, and avoid the log jams that have been happening in the House of Commons at the moment. It would change everything. And for people who maybe don't know it, I mean, what is his plan that he can finally put into place if he has that majority? So Boris Johnson's plan essentially takes the whole of the United Kingdom um, out of the EU Customs Union, which allows it to strike trade deals with other countries across the world. Um, it takes the UK as a whole out of all of the organisations of the EU. Um, which is obviously the kind of the purpose of Brexit as a whole. But what it also does is it removes the uh, backstop agreements between Northern, between the UK and uh, the EU, specifically the Republic of Ireland, which will keep Northern Ireland in the EU customs territory um, in the single market. And it was completely hated by Conservatives and the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland. And how essential is that to removing the Irish backstop? That was, um, that was an achievement that allowed Boris Johnson to take the deal back to his parliamentary party and to win over most of the hardliners within the party, those who voted against Theresa May's deal. So it was significant from a party discipline perspective, um, but by that point, the Conservatives had lost their majority with the DUP. Now, how do you think this will play out for the Scottish National Party, who are already talking about separating and holding their own referendum to do that? How do you see this playing out there? Um, what is likely to happen is the SNP will probably increase their seat share within Scotland, and that will give them a greater legitimacy to demand a, a second independence referendum, um, despite the fact that the last one, held in 2014, was supposed to be once in a generation. However, Nicola Sturgeon, the leader of the SNP, has said that she won't um, have a referendum extra constitutionally, so she will follow the rules. Um, and so that requires requesting a referendum from the government, the national government. And so the ball will be in Boris Johnson's court. But also, how does that play out in Scotland? I mean, that just adds this whole other dimension to all of this, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But that dimension is already present now. So Scottish politics isn't a competition between leave and remain, left and right. It's a, basically a competition between do you want to be independent or do you want to remain part of the EU? That's how their party, um, so remain part of the UK. That's how their party system is structured at the moment anyway. So it's just part and parcel of what's going on there. Now the EU has agreed to a Brexit extension until January 31st of next year. Can you walk us through that agreement for right now? And what does all of that mean that we do have that extension? So that extension is um, essentially the longest the UK can remain within the EU um, without requesting another extension. If, you know, after this election there is a vote on, our, on, the, on Boris Johnson's withdrawal agreement, then we can go to the EU earlier and say, we've got an agreement, you've agreed it with us, Parliament's ratified it. We are, now we are now in a position to leave the EU. Um, but if we get to the 31st, we will either crash out with a no-deal Brexit or we will have to request another extension. So what if Johnson doesn't increase his seat total and where does that leave us after that December election? If Boris Johnson doesn't win this election and essentially have an outright majority in the House of Commons, um, what is likely to happen is 
the Labour Party will provide the government with minority support from the SNP, from all the other parties, essentially, including the Lib Dems. But one of the policies which will be a, a second referendum on um, membership of the EU. So if Boris Johnson does, Boris Johnson needs to win uh, a, a healthy majority to avoid that. Whereas in order to get a second referendum, remain parties only have to, they don't have to win themselves. They just have to deprive Boris Johnson of the majority. Now, what is this doing to politics in the UK right now? I mean, what kind of chaos is all of this causing? I'm trying to help Canadians here understand it. Well, essentially, there's two things. One is that it's, um, it's ripping parties apart, at least the main two parties, it seems, because within Labour, there's debates between whether you want a second referendum or you want to enact the first referendum. It's split the Conservative Party massively. It's already seen off one Prime Minister. But most importantly, from a kind of governance perspective, is you can't do anything else. Major pieces of legislation over the last three years have been held up because the apparatus of government is focused towards trying to deliver Brexit. There's a significant cost to the public, um, to the public purse, in terms of money spent, but also time spent. So there's basically three years of essentially paralysis. And for people on the ground, I mean, people who have either voted for or any of these parties, what are they feeling about how their government is basically crippled by all of this? Yeah, so um, what, we, what we see is, broadly speaking, people's opinions haven't changed. Um, there's been a slight swing to remain, but not a massive swing that would suggest the British public as a whole have, um, have changed their minds. As a nation on this question, we are divided. Um, and it will, the idea that once we leave the EU, these divisions will heal, I think is quite um, optimistic. And so as a society, government um, and also individuals will have to do more to kind of heal, to build those bridges um, amongst people who disagree quite fiercely on these questions. I mean, so in essence, the real work comes after all of this. Yes. So if um, or when this deal's passed, um, that would just be the end of the beginning. We'd still have to negotiate what our relationship with the EU on a day-to-day -day basis would look like, what our relationship with other countries would look like, and also turn in and look at ourselves and look at, it as a country, what do we need to do next to, to heal division within society. I wanted to also ask you, because this is three delays on Brexit this year so far, we do have a new date of January, but, you know, can it again be delayed? I mean, what happens if it is delayed again? So if Boris Johnson wins his majority, it is unlikely that we'll ask for another extension because we won't need one. We've got an agreement that the EU is happy with and that the government's happy with, and so all it needs is to be passed by the House of Commons. If Boris Johnson doesn't win, the likelihood is that we will request another extension under a new government um, in order to give um, to give time to hold a second referendum on EU membership. And then if, if that referendum is also a majority for leave, like we, we don't know what would happen then because we would have a government that is opposed to leaving the EU having to deliver leaving the EU. So that would be that would be a that's a potential catastrophe down the road uh, for the opposition parties. It's a catastrophe on top of the chaos that we already have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disaster upon disaster. Well, thank you very much, David Jeffrey, for joining us today. And that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us. For the West Block, I'm Mike LeCouture.